Connor, Marathon build number two. How would you compare it to, to number one? Um, it's, been, it's been a lot more difficult. Uh, my training partners have both had injuries they're dealing with. Uh, it's Clayton Young and Jared Ward. They're kind of my, the main guys I work out with. And so this time I've had to do a lot of my runs on my own. A lot of workouts, but I don't know. I'm, I'm running faster than I did before, but it's just more difficult. Uh, If you slowed down, wouldn't it be a little bit less uh, difficult? And, you know, sometimes I think that, and then I do slow down for one rep, and then I'm like, no, this, this still sucks. Like, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep the pace. Like, I was going. And I mean, obviously, it's a completely different type of course than Chicago. So, right. do you think that the hills? Are you looking forward to that, or would you? I, yeah, I think so. I think um, I've raced a lot on hills, uh, both in cross country and just growing up, like. When I got into the sport, it was, I don't know, I was this 12 year old trying to jump on these half marathons, and then downhill, and then uphill, and then like down a canyon for eight miles or so. And I've always loved, I don't know, competing on hills, I've always been better on them. Um, I don't know why exactly, if it's just because I grew up or I know the area. But I, I look forward to it because I think it'll kind of help give me an advantage in miles. I think. After mile about 19, after the first few hills, I think I'll be inspired. Getting a bit of advantage in my competition. And do you train a lot different? Like, is the training different because of the hills? Like, does Ed have you do stuff specifically for the hills? We did a few workouts and a, and a few long runs that were hillier areas. Um, one long or one workout we did. There's one Jared ran the same uh, right before. Like some two mile repeats and then a few of the last two were like up to straight up hill essentially. Well, not straight up hill, but like up a canyon. And so I feel pretty like um, ready for these uphills. What about the downhill though? I mean, I think I just run so well downhills. I think it's not something I had to really work on too much. Um, I think if anything, it's just. I'm used to that pounding on my legs from down and around. Um, not, not to say like I'm underestimating him, I just think I haven't had a good time. I guess we're not just time I can't really. I do. I don't know. It's kind of like I see the downhills where I get the most advantage. Like when I say like I'm going to be feeling good at mile 19, that's where the advantage is going to come in. It's going to be from. I don't think I'm going to feel as pounded from the first. I don't know. Not all the downhills in the first 10 miles as much as other people will. And it was kind of hard to have a goal because you know, Scott Fabo was saying you can't really control what other people do, but what is kind of, I mean, you got to have a goal, right? Like, what is it? I, I mean, top five, get that all in standard. Uh, I mean, I'll probably, probably get in on the world ranking anyway if I top three at the trials, but like, uh, it's nice to get that standard. Um, if the weather's good, I mean, let, let me, let me re rephrase it this way. If I was running the Chicago floors, I'd want to break 207 this weekend. Um, obviously, this isn't that course, and that we're not going to have that weather then. But I don't know if it's if we have a tailwind. I want to break 207 or 206. Like maybe not 206. Well, I mean, obviously, I am just talking big, but you're just trying to um, whatever footprint would be in my mind after we're up to. I can say yeah, that's about 207 in Chicago. So. I hate to break it to you, but it looks like a, head, a headwind. Oh, headwind. Yeah. Oh. Our stat guy, he said he, he said that it was going to impact you by two minutes and four seconds. Slow you down. So. All right, two minutes and four seconds. Then, uh, so, I'll just, all right. That'll be 206.55. All right, well, good luck, and we'll uh, see you Monday. What about trying to get the 10K standard? I, I, I have this theory that people should try to get it on the roads because you can wear the super shoes. Do you think the super shoes... Road shoes are faster than the spikes? I, I, I personally think so. It might be a hot take, but I do think, like, if I could wear the outfit line on the track for a 10K, I would do that for sure. Um, I feel better in workouts on the outfit lines, but, you know, everybody's, everybody's different, and yeah, their bank is there, and they're 40 millimeters instead of like 20, 25. So there's a new one right out. Have you tried that? The, is that the Vaporfly 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is that I've, I've tried, I don't yeah, I've tried both of them. I've tried both of them. I've tried both of 
started by myself and I was saying, but I think I, I really like the Alpha Flight 1. Some people like keep telling me that I love the Alpha Flight 2, so I think everybody needs to find the shit that works guys can have. And do you, how do you, do you just run in it and see how it feels, or do you get in a lab and... I've done both. Um, I've done some lab work. And, like, I mean, see how it feels. I mean, sometimes the lab can be, you know, what you measure might not be the. I think if somebody says the I mean, it might be something else you need to measure that actually does it like too close, but yeah, we did a lot of lab work. Everyone holds back. I personally did it all in the Alpha Fly 1. I don't know if it's like a, like a super, super shoe for me, and all the other ones are just super shoes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's very nice to be able to do it. All right, well, good luck. I would like